following the presidential election of 1980, the censors came out. They came out of the woodwork overnight, really. Um, ALA, who tracked challenges to books, knew that overnight, literally overnight, the challenges, um, there were at least four times as many right away. And of course, that grew and grew. I really didn't have any experience in the 70s with um, censorship or, or book challenges. It is true that when I gave three copies of Are You There, God, It's Me, Margaret, to my children's elementary school in, what, 1971, I think, the male principal of that school refused to have them in the library because he thought that menstruation was, I don't know what he thought. Well, I don't know what he thought about it, but he didn't want it in his school. Never mind how many kids, you know, that school went up to sixth grade. Fifth and sixth graders were already menstruating. Um, now, I mean, that seems to me so laughable. But that really, there were no, um, there were no organized attempts in the 70s to rid school libraries uh, of children's books. When it started in 1980, um, I was a target of, of the censors. They wanted my books removed. It's always been interesting to me that they never come after books that kids don't read. They come after books that kids like, as if to say, if children like these books, we know there's something wrong with them. We know that these are books that we don't want children to read. And it was, it was organized, it was frightening, um, and the publishers were not prepared for it. The school librarians were not prepared for it. And if a parent ran into a library waving a book and saying, take this book out, in many cases, the librarian gave in and took the book out because he or she also felt alone, as I felt alone, isolated. Now, what happened then was that I discovered the National Coalition Against Censorship, which was a young organization back then, and also other organizations, but mainly for me it was NCAC. And once I found them, I felt not alone. I felt together we can fight this. I mean, it, it went so far as Phyllis Shafley had a group called the, Eagles Forum, the Eagle Forum, and the Eagle Forum printed a pamphlet that was handed out at public places, at supermarkets, you know, and it was a pamphlet called How to Rid Your Schools and Libraries of Judy Bloom Books. And my secretary sent away for these pamphlets and got them, so I saw them. And you didn't have to read the book. No, it just told you what to do. It gave you maybe specific words or passages. But in those days, librarians didn't even have, um, there were no policies in place. And so if a parent came in, you didn't have to uh, put this complaint in writing. Today, of course, policies are in place in most cases. I, I won't say all, but in most cases. If a parent complains, that parent has to fill out the complaint in writing. The complaint will then go before um, a professional group who will look into this. In some cases now, children sign petitions and explain why this book is important to them. That doesn't mean we're not having, you know, many, many, many cases of book challenges. Just look at the list. ALA keeps a list. NCAC keeps a list. Um, and, and there it goes. And I believe that it, it all has to do with fear. Uh, what started with the extreme religious right is contagious. And we have the PC groups on the left who want books removed. 
uh, and everybody in between. If you removed all the books that people complain about, there would be nothing good to read.